Hello and welcome to the WADFAM Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Acebo. And we are here to talk about episode 367, The Decision. That we are. Oh boy. This... I... Do you have any memory of this episode, Dylan? Uh, vague recollection. Zero for me. So... There's there's a couple pieces of it where I'm like, ah, yes. Um, but but no, overall, not a, not a ton. Um... Andrew, do you do without looking, unless you've already looked? Do you, do you know who wrote and directed this episode? I, I mean, I'm gonna guess Marshall Younger. It is a written and directed by Phil Lawler episode. Oh, that's not surprising because Int- like, okay. I mean, this is not a great Connie episode. The the not a great <laughs> Connie episode I think is the closest thing to a giveaway that there is. Yeah. But I think once again we're kind of in a like half decent streak Filled. of like, <laughs> like I mean last week was not a Phil Waller episode. Yeah, that was Dave Arnold and, Mc- and and Paul McCusker. But then like we're back on the we had a Phil Waller episode two weeks ago and we have a Phil Waller episode again this week and it just feels like. Yeah, He's I don't know. Hit his stroke a little bit in here. A little bit. Not, I, yeah. I mean, got to give him credit where credits due. That's the unfortunate part of you know having a conscience and spending five years giving a person endless crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like the, the, yeah. This is a pretty good functional episode. Connie's writing is thin, and there's actually like a little anecdote i i didn't see it in either the official guide or the um or the complete guide but Mm -hmm. there was a note um that came up on the on the wiki and Mm -hmm. they seem to be referencing so there was an episode called 500 which is the it's the episode like right after exit i believe it's the 500th episode of odyssey and this is just like a recap behind the scenes kind of episode and I guess it's revealed in that that there was some additional dialogue that Connie had in this episode um, comparing her situation to a sitcom and just like some stuff that Katie Lee fought to have removed and they did, Um, which I think is brought up in 500 as like an example of like how the actors have like some ownership over their characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about it before, but it's just like, there is like, that makes a lot of sense though, that Phil would write Connie doing something like that. Like that checks out. Right. Like, like, <laughs> it, yeah, it, there's a, it, it's fun to hear that. Like, right. She had enough control having done this show for almost a decade at this point. Yeah, certainly to be like, actually, no, I don't think we should do that. Mm-hmm. And then they didn't. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's that's actually really cool. And I I appreciate their willingness to, yeah, to, to edit and rework things. I will say uh, the romance between Jack and Joanne in this episode is, is pretty Lawler-esque in their dialogue. Um, <laughs> I, I can see it there. I can see it there as well. But but it's not terrible, and like it, it's sweet and fun, and uh, you know we'll talk about it when we get there. Yeah. Well, we can we can talk about here because we're doing cast stuff off the top. So we've got we've got the this is the introductory episode for one Joanne Allen, um, hot dog, being voiced by Janet Waldo. Um, she had previously been on the show as Lawrence Hodges' mom. Mm-hmm. Um, I think who's been in an episode we've covered, but if not, uh, like, oh, she was in the first one of Aloha Oi. Is she? I know Lawrence is in those episodes. Can't remember if his mom is at all. Yeah, no. But um, regardless, like they had had her on that. They wanted to find her a way to be on the show long term, mm-hmm. and wound up writing a Jack Allen love interest character for her. Um, both Alan Young and Janet Waldo had worked together over the years on different really? projects. That's and so, so they cool. already had a incredible chemistry. Yeah, exactly. And and so this is like a yeah, it's an interesting move of the show to go like we have broken up Jason and Tasha. Mm-hmm. We have put on a hold Eugene and Katrina. Yeah. Wit is back. Mm-hmm. 
I guess we got to come up with another romance pr- plot. Who's available? Yeah, Jack and Joy. Jack. Mm-hmm. So let's let's introduce someone. And you know what? No complaints for me. No, in in all honesty, like if this relationship, you know, makes the most sense out of all of them, just because they are both people that are you know in stable points in their lives um and are looking they're they're single and looking for for romance and such so the fact that they found each other I mean, is, are they looking i don't know that they are necessarily they, were, they weren't running away from the prospect yeah. <laughs> it's not like jack got terrified when he started to get the butterflies in his yeah stomach. yeah um and, and we've i think we've talked about it before it's established on the show like jack has already been married mm-hmm. um yeah. he also has a dead wife um, as characters so cool. in Odyssey are wont to do. Um, yeah, she and... fell down the stairs. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> it is just like a, like, so technically, uh-huh. like, I know that Agnes is not dead, but like, everyone in Odyssey, kind, like, all of the, like, Maud has never seen, Agnes has yes. never seen, yes. Jenny is dead, yeah. Jack's previous wife, whose name I do not remember, is also dead. Uh, yeah, oh, Agnes Emily, is basically dead. Emily. Emily. Emily is Lovely. his first wife. But I, It's actually funny that uh, Bart and uh, Do- Doris <laughs> Rathbone are like... Yeah. Right, at this point in the show, because we don't have a lot of, like, parent characters during this era. Yeah. Like, there's not, like, we are we are pre-Straussbergs, we are post-Barclays, we're pre-Washingtons. Like, there's just not a lot of, there's not a, a first family of Odyssey at the moment. Mm-hmm. At least not one that comes to mind. Beyond the Rathbuns. Um, right. <laughs> they are always the first family of Odyssey in my mind. Ah, <laughs> uh, in, in your heart. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um I I feel like that kinda that kinda covers it um context wise. I don't know if there's yeah, anything no. else we want to hit on up top. No, so. it's a, I mean they're they're all just bangers. I mean, Katie Lee, Will Ryan, Alan Young, Townsend Coleman, Janet Walno, Paul Herlinger. Like <laughs> that those are all really spectacular voice actors coming together here and yeah. uh to have them all together is nice mm-hmm. all right then i'm gonna roll the promo i wonder if the music will match this time <laughs> is it god's call or is it a wrong number next time on adventures in odyssey whip ponders an urgent request to go to the mission field but it's the worst thing that could happen to Connie. And everyone else has their own opinion. Should Whit go or should he stay? And who goes if he doesn't? You figure it out on the next Adventures in Odyssey. If I go, there will be trouble. If I stay, it will be double. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? The question that Wit is entertaining in this episode, lovely. Uh, the the music actually matched the promo <laughs> this time, which is nice. Uh, yeah, shout out to two weeks ago when it did not. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's always always fun, and yeah, no, I, I, I I'm excited to cover this episode because I I actually think that I've been I, I'm I'm enjoying it, like. Pretty thoroughly, in a way that I didn't think that I would, because it's not an episode that I have a whole lot of recollection for. Yeah. The episode begins with uh, wit on Candid Conversations, mm-hmm. um, and in classic Candid Conversations style, um, Connie's talking to the person, mm-hmm. and we get a caller who comes in and reveals something that Connie didn't know, and mm-hmm. she gets upset, and mm-hmm. then the show ends. Yep. And that is really the blueprint for Candid Conversations, <laughs> set out by the fact that this is the first one. Oh. Huh. It's interesting just how well established it already feels in this episode. Yeah. Where yeah. they don't feel that, like, to Lawler's credit, he doesn't feel the need to, like, set this up in any way. Well, I mean, the title kind of tells the story pretty yeah. well. so It, it does. It, it works. It's a good title. Yeah. 
It was a great title. Totally worth parodying. Um, yeah, no, I... All right, I, Andrew. I, I think that... Uh, <laughs> You that is to so say funny. About candid commentaries. No, nothing. Not 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 one bit. I think it's a great great title. I think I find it. Don't look at me like you don't believe me. <laughs> I uh-huh. didn't lie. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it, it yeah it it does just it it works here. I yeah, like no, it. it feels like, like it's an existing show. I yep. if you didn't tell me that this was the first episode, there's no way I would have known. Yeah, and that's something that I think, like, Odyssey does pretty well overall, and we've talked about a lot over the years. But Mm. just, like, even though it is a show that has a clear linear progression, Mm. you don't really get screwed over by jumping around in it. Yeah. Um, Which, like, I think is a hard balance to strike, because a lot of children's media goes too far one way and it's just Mm -hmm. like there is no linear progression so nothing ever changes yeah or you can be like more married to your timeline and Mm -hmm. have to like really step through it and then like there are gaps for people who miss episodes and like you can't expect kids to see every episode Mm -hmm. and like this show does a good job of straddling that line i think yeah no i think the the point you make is exactly uh and, exactly right. And the fact that they you're making it knowing that they can sell and bundle it as an album. Yeah. Like that they can sell you a chunk of 12 episodes mm-hmm. does certainly help mm-hmm. versus like the home media situation for television. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is fair. And the idea that episodes can be repackaged and have multiple purposes in the way that they've done where it's like, "Oh, yes, you've got you know, we can we can make it so that, you know, we have a collection of just Bible episodes. Oh, uh, sure. Like it's, a tw- you know, 12 albums of just Bible or 12 episodes of just Bible episodes, but we only put one Bible episode per album. So, you know, you can do compilations and all of that. Like, I feel like there's just so much more versatility um, for the context in which the episodes can be heard and the stories told. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I would, and no one should do this, <laughs> but I would love the, like, I would, or I would be very curious about the podcast that is people who have not heard Odyssey truly listening from the beginning to every episode. I think it's a terrible idea and nobody should do it, yeah, but I no. want to know what that experience is. Because my experience is so, like... Backwards. And yeah, combobulated. and just all over the place. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah. It's a weird, like, so it's like a weird thing to be like, oh, right. Jack and Joanne aren't a couple for the first years of the show. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the, like, even when Jack's introduced, it is two, three years later yeah. until Joanne is introduced. And it's mm-hmm. like, I always think of them as a pair. No, but, yeah. like, they function well enough on their own that I don't really question it when she's not there. Like, it's mm-hmm. just, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, no, they they definitely do a lot of um, really cool things with those characters. And, and I think it's a credit to the chemistry that they have, um, you know, on mic together and, and the quality of the voice acting um, that's, that's being done. I think that that makes, I think that that can cover a multitude of sins as far as what the writing is doing and making it feel natural and real. And, and like you said, you know, they're, because they've lived in these characters for multiple years, they have so much ownership over their perspective and, and, um, how that they, how they would interact in, in the world. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, Connie freaks out. <laughs> right, because everyone except for her knew about Wit's potential missions tour, mm-hmm. um, which is an interesting thing. They keep referring to it as a missions tour. Is that a thing? I I've, don't know. Like, I understand what they're saying because it's not just a trip to one location. The idea is that he would, like, bounce around and check in on a bunch of places. Yeah. But it's not a phrase I've ever heard. No, certainly. I, I feel like that's... 
you know, that's like some righteous gemstone stuff, like where you got to be really high up in the churches with a lot of money to get to go on a missions tour, <laughs> or you've got it like bases you need to check, right. and or all you that. have to have founded an encyclopedia company that's Precisely. also <laughs> a mission, like it's also a missions organization. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna uh, do research for the encyclopedia company while also, you know, doing uh, <laughs> a quality check on all the depots. <laughs> mm, mm. I love um, calling missionaries uh, depots. <laughs> I'm glad for you, I guess. I'm not. No. I don't. <laughs> and please don't be. Um, yeah. And then we do the thing that this show so rarely does, where we cut out on Connie being like, you just got here. How can you leave? Mm -hmm. And then we go to commercial and we yeah. come back on the same line. Yeah. And it is such a common television trope mm -hmm. in the age of commercials that I just... Odyssey uses so sparingly, and it was kind of jarring. No, no, it was jarring, and I, I even made note of it when I when I heard it, because I was like, oh, huh, I think that was a commercial break. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and there wasn't even, like, interstitial or music or anything like that. There wasn't... I don't think there was, like... Yeah, a, there's a little fade out. Yeah, but... That's so crazy. Yeah. It is, it is interesting that they don't do that more, considering how much they love to play off of the sitcom and the and the TV uh I think it's comedy. to their strength, and I also think that the fact that they have the home release in mind when they're creating it definitely plays into that. Yeah, okay. That would make sense. The absolute worst example of this, by the way, like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of bad examples of this, but the one that I always will think of is early, early days of Netflix trying to watch Mythbusters. Oh. And they always cut out on mm -hmm. a line, yep. go to a long cut of, like, them of the logo. Yeah. Then come back in on another different long thing of the logo and then play the line again. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think. I know Mythbusters is terrible about that. There's got to be another show. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I so mean, reality TV. Yeah, reality TV shows are definitely bad uh, perpetrators of such crimes. And the whole. Sure. Yeah, repeating themselves and. Oh my yeah. Because you got to catch all the people who didn't sit through the commercial. Like, who, who are coming in during the commercial break. Yeah. No, it, it, it does make a certain amount of sense, certainly. It's it is interesting though because I feel like all of my favorite shows from childhood are the ones that don't play on that like <laughs> like like Avatar: The Last Airbender like that is a show that sure I guess you could kind of bounce around in but it is very much a like you want to watch it from beginning to end so that it makes sense otherwise sure. you're gonna be missing a lot. Yeah. And you yeah, know you, those shows that came out like right on the cusp of the internet, like yeah. being like a home for video, I feel like really changed that because I always think of like Star Wars: The Clone Wars with that. Oh yeah, where like you would the episodes would air on television on a Friday night, mm -hmm. and then they would be available on StarWars.com on a Monday, mm -hmm. and so like you had that ability to keep up with the show even if you weren't. Watch watching it live. it live and then the episodes would disappear after three weeks mm. so it wasn't like they were just all there yeah but it was like it was a show that like understood that hey we can actually like establish some continuity and like make that rewarding if we do it mm -hmm. this way yeah interesting i never and that's not even a show that had like a ton of continuity like they no no were, it was very like contained story arcs but it built over time mm -hmm. and they like used that to their advantage that there was certainly another medium to be able to deploy this immediately yeah well and to to be able to retain as many people as possible by providing as much information as possible yeah um so yeah obviously connie's upset and she's talking to to wit and um eugene's ups or yeah connie's upset at wit and eugene walks up connie's upset at eugene because eugene knew about this the whole time and never told her and eugene actually like says he's sorry <laughs> 
which is surprising, but also, like, really good, and it makes sense, and Wit even gives him his props for that, which is nice. It's a nice little moment of growth for, you know, both characters, and and it plays at what, you know, this this whole episode is trying to get at, which is, like, these characters have continued to grow despite Wit being there or not. Um, and so, yeah. Well, yeah, so, like, there's there's this, like, Keely is just doing a good job playing upset. And there's a point at which, yeah, Wit asks for forgiveness pretty quickly mm-hmm. in a way that's not, like, super sincere. Yeah. But, like, it does acknowledge, like, the thing that I was thinking, which is, like, I do think Wit is kind of in the wrong here. Like, he's like, he's like, well, I didn't tell you because it's not, like, a done deal. And it's like, I do kind of think that no, you, you should have looped her in. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know that keeping this from her was a good call even if you weren't doing it like super intentionally the fact that you weren't super intentionally roping her in is maybe a bit of a problem yeah Um, i mean you're at the very least her boss like that's yeah very significant right and she also throws out that he's the person who means more to her than anyone else in the world yeah screw her mom i guess that is a (laughs) strong line yeah yeah from a high school girl to to an old man yep yep yeah no there's what well, hearing that definitely set off some like grooming alarms in my head <laughs> not to say that that's necessarily what was happening but like yeah there was clearly a uh, yeah there was extreme language used here and, and it's not necessarily incorrect or inaccurate to their relationship but i think it does kind of highlight some of the concerns that therein lie <laughs> sure yep um, but yeah, this is what, oh, Wit mentions that someone is coming into town yeah. from the missions board to talk to him and name drops that it's Joanne Woodston. And I was like, <gasps> Joanne, you get Joanne now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, then Wit leaves and Connie and Eugene have this exchange, um, where Connie is like trying to keep Eugene or keep Wit from leaving, and Eugene's like, "No, that's dumb," and like it is just this weird thing where it's like Eugene is often played as a more mature character than Connie, mm-hmm. but for a while there, the fact that Connie was a Christian and Eugene wasn't meant that like in certain areas they allowed Connie to be more insightful than Eugene. Yeah, exactly. With Eugene becoming a Christian, it does feel like we have lost that. No, uh, yeah, and that and, he's like truly her superior now, mm-hmm. even though he is so much newer in his faith than she is. Yeah. Like it is a bit of a bummer in that regard. Well, and, and I, that varies writer to writer, but yeah. I think that it does vary in the sense that like um like, when, when Eugene becomes a Christian, obviously, that's when everything with Katrina goes down. And so then his incompetencies in that, you know, in that arena are highlighted. And so Connie steps up to be helpful. But, I mean, you know, even that, though, is starting prior to him being a Christian. Yeah, yeah. That's starting him prior, prior to him being a Christian and also is played for laughs and not really to the sense that Connie is actually being a helpful, constructive force here. (laughs) Right. Like, I'm like, is... Like, we're supposed to think Connie's dumb. We're not supposed to be laughing at Connie during this episode. Yeah. I'm correct in that, right? Like, there's not... Like, whereas, like, Eugene getting, you know, crashing Katrina's not wedding Uh is a joke. Mm Mm-hmm. Connie trying to stop Wit from leaving... Doesn't feel like a joke. No. It feels like everyone should be sitting there going, wow, Connie, you're so dumb. Mm -hmm. Or, 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 you know, wow, Connie, you are, yeah, you're you're reacting really strongly to something that's not guaranteed. Or, uh, wow, Connie, you know, you seem to have really strong feelings about Wit leaving, like what was it like for him to not be here you know sure. like, yeah it's just it's hard to know what what you as the audience are supposed to find funny and what you are not yeah like if odyssey had a laugh track would, where would it punctuate all of connie's lines in this episode oh uh, no no <laughs> it might punctuate jacks though 
I mean, for sure. Yeah. Dak's got some bangers. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it's a weird thing. There's also, there's also in this moment, there's a thing, there's this audio thing that keeps happening. It happens like three times in this episode and I can't figure out why, which it sounds like the play button being pressed on a cassette. I heard that once and I thought that it was my computer. Like, I, th- I yeah, genuinely thought it was, I like, my headphones. I could not figure it out. And, like, later, I'm like, maybe it's a car door closing and not, like, the mm-hmm. cassette button being pressed. But it's just, like, a weird sound that's dropped at a couple spots. And I'm mm-hmm. like, is this Connie, like, is this showing her, like, editing the candid conversation while she's having these conversations? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. Or, I mean, or could it just be, like you know bleed over from the recording process for the episode like could this be unintentional maybe and just slipped and... it seems it seems loud but yeah yeah i only heard it the once so yeah if it happened three times you know. i clocked it three times but but yeah anyways yeah it's just a weird sound thing if anybody knows anything about that wadfamjackpot at gmail.com please um, do explain <laughs> <laughs> there's mysterious buttons and we're yeah. scared yeah and then, right, we kind of go out of this exchange between Connie and Eugene, setting up what the whole point of the episode is going to be on Connie's side, which is we have to make Wit see that we need him. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, a fair and understandable response for a teenager to have towards their parent figure leaving. Yep. But there is no real validation or... Um, engagement with that <laughs> from anybody yeah also yes it's the problem of odyssey likes to treat connie as a full-fledged adult mm-hmm. but not always write her as one yeah and this is like another one of those situations yeah well uh, yeah so anyways uh downstairs uh wit is getting joanne a something something to drink um and jason's down there as well and he offers her one of their uh world famous lemonades a wad fam lemonade (laughs) if if you will um and yeah she explains that like they need to send someone to south america post haste that like the situation Mm -hmm. down there is getting even more dire and like if we yeah like this, this, it there, needs to answer soon mm. because they've got to fix this problem. Yeah, they said something like uh, they were receiving concerning letters, and like it doesn't align with our Christian faith or something like that. Correct. Like, I and you know maybe I didn't uh, put together like who's sending this letter and like what. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It felt it, like, it felt very much like are like, they afraid that the missionary is getting converted to like the native religion? Like no, that was the impression I, I got. Mm, I took it as way more of like a of like an axe or like one of like Paul's letters kind of thing. Okay. Where it's like they need someone to come in and like set their doctrine straight kind yeah. of idea. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, maybe they're like everyone's getting circumcised and we need to go explain that that's not the thing to do yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Like it felt, it felt very in line with some of the like early epistles okay. kind of idea. That's what, yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense than my, I don't know that it makes a lot more sense. I just, yeah. Um, she explains that like the vote for Eugene or for wit to go, um, was a 12. Yes. One, no secret mm. ballot. Um, and then Wit's like, who was it? And Joanne's like, it was a secret ballot, dummy. Yep. <laughs> like, yes. Yep. So they're they're upstairs talking in the office when uh Jason barges in mm-hmm. and um and we find out that uh Jack followed him up. Mm-hmm. So Jason's clearly losing his spy touch. Yeah, because um, he didn't know that Jack was right behind him. Yep. But Jack has missed the fact that there is an attractive woman in this room. Hubba hubba. And boy, does the production and performances choreograph like love at first sight so hard. Oh my god. And I kind of love it. No, I mean, it's it's so cute. And like... There's a music cue and all of their voices kind of start to drift. Yeah, yeah, no. They, they, I mean, it's, it's very... They, they lean into it pretty hard. In a way that, like, in my opinion, would not work if it was with Connie and somebody else or, like, sure. young people. But the fact that it's, like, kind of older people yeah. 
that you know are famously single or whatever in in their late adulthood is is yeah it's endearing and it's Jack sweet. Jack is a widower. We don't yeah. know what Joanne's status is at this point. Um, uh, other I think than she's a single, div- isn't she a divorcee? Do we find that out? I don't know. We got to keep listening. Keep listening. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, then Jason's like, well, someone's got to take her to the hotel. Mm-hmm. and Eyebrows, eyebrows. Yeah, and he's just like, I was going to, but I've got something I want to do with my dad real quick. Jack, would you be able to? And Jack, Jack's like, oh, oh well, no, so he doesn't even, I don't think he asked Jack. I think Jack volunteers. Oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, regardless, it is just... Jason being the absolute best wingman. Oh, yeah. No, he's coming in like, actually, I need to talk to Lit about this, but I was going to do that. And, and yeah. Yeah. It's so good. I I absolutely adore it. I I need a Jason in my life. It's great. I'll, I'll, I can't. I want to try, but I don't think that I could be that suave. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know that I trust you. Hey, have you met Dylan? <laughs> he runs an Adventures and Odyssey podcast. He Great. loves to talk about it. <laughs> yep, that's what my dating profile says. Yep, I mean, that's what it is on Tinder. It's just a his Facebook profile picture and the logo for this podcast. Yep, doing great with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, Jason... Um, Make Dylan <laughs> a Tinder profile jock squad. Great. Yep. Uh huh. Send it to me so I can find it. Nobody knows what my face looks like. I do. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I the, the the people who I know in real life who listen to this do certainly. But I think most people are in the dark. Have you never you never linked your Instagram? Well, I guess you have a private Instagram. As well. I have a private Instagram. My profile picture is not my face. Yeah. 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 And you really don't post pictures of your face much on Instagram either. So like. But I also don't, it's a private Instagram. Yeah, yeah. doesn't matter if I would or wouldn't. It's a private Instagram. Yeah. I don't think my face is on my Twitter either. No, no that's, I think that's more. And those are the, those are the two places that I'm linked. Speaking of so. which, what about threads? <laughs> no. No, no threads for no Dylan? No threads for Dylan. Aw, that's no fun. I'm not looking for more social media in my life. Yeah, but. I tried to kill off twitter and reddit at the start of the year and i keep relapsing and now they're just gonna kill themselves off yeah yeah no the whole no apollo thing is real rough it's really cut down on my reddit time this is completely off topic but it is deeply upsetting didn't know you were an apollo guy you got me into apollo okay i'll take your word for it you definitely did that's fun. Yeah, because you said one one once I got the iPhone, like I want to say it was three years ago or so. Four the years two ago. things I was like is like, hey, you have an iPhone now. Use Overcast and use Apollo. Apollo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that does <laughs> check out. <laughs> that was exactly the situation. Because I'm someone who doesn't use an iPhone, and those are the, those were like the two things where I was like, I kind of like to have an iPhone for these two things. Yeah, and that's literally it. And uh, now that there's no Apollo, it's just Overcast that's keeping me. <laughs> mm-hmm me some overcast Not it is quite worth me switching but like it's the closest anything is yes certainly especially at this point oh man um so yeah so jason hangs around and he and wit start talking through some stuff and i mm-hmm. just like had the realization of like this episode is some of the first that we've seen like wit and jason interact mm-hmm. just the two of them and it's like it's kind of a weird father son dynamic where I'm like I don't know that this entirely feels right. It doesn't. But <laughs> also, but it is like the thing of like they've spent a lot of time away from each other, and they are both like Weed is so old, and Jason is such an adult at this point. Yeah, that it's like I kind of get it. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, it is. It, it's funny, and I yeah, and so Connie bursts in mm-hmm. to uh, say that they need. To, that Wit needs to come down to work on the curly Q nozzle, which yes. is something that was set up in Gone. Yeah, no, I yeah, like that was Jack's whole thing. Is mm-hmm. he came in, he can make a curly Q without the nozzle. Yeah, he knows how to do it. And and Jason just keeps insisting that you know that's not needed, and finally just bursts out. And is like I fixed it like the other day, Connie. Yeah, come on. yeah, yeah. It's not necessary. That's not. I fixed it yeah. two days ago. And she's like, oh well, okay, and. uh 
does Connie say anything else before she leaves? Or she just, I think she just leaves at that point. She just leaves. Yeah. Um, because then we jump to Jack and Joanne on their mm-hmm. little rendezvous. Yes. And uh, Joanne reveals that, yeah, it kind of is just like, a, you know, I'm a big city girl. Mm-hmm. This is like, I didn't ever think I could like a place like this, but mm-hmm. like its charms are winning me over. Yeah. And she's like, and they Loves clearly. Loves the small town vibes. Yeah. And clearly this place matters to wit as well. Mm-hmm. And there are welcome home wit signs everywhere. <laughs> So she's like, this like this can't be easy for him to to leave to leave, and she explains then that if um that if he doesn't go that like she's going to because there's no one else who's like qualified and yeah. able to go yeah um and Jack's like I hope it's not too forward to say that doesn't sit too well with me and she's like it is very forward but I agree yeah which is so cute yes. and like I love to see it uh yeah. very sitcommy but like. Oh. So I, good. I don't know it's and cute then and, and then they're waving goodbye yeah and he jack kind of goes do you have any dinner plans yeah yeah and joanne says yes you're, you're picking, picking me, me up, up at seven who <sighs> it is the hottest thing on this show <sighs> like <sighs> please yes tell me what to do thank mm-hmm, you mm-hmm I I do make a lot of decisions in my life, and I would like you to make all of them for me if that is uh, possible. Oh man, uh. just like the yeah, I just I love I love the forwardness. I love the familiarity in their relationship it's so, so quickly. Yeah, I it, like the playfulness. I just like this is like in a the sort of adult relationship that never really gets portrayed. Yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, just like too like not quite elderly, but getting close to it yeah people late 50s early 60s yep presumably yes yeah finding each other and yeah falling in love yeah just being enamored with each other's company and yeah. uh, it's really it's really cute and yep. sweet and i think it works really well um yes and you know I, and for, if you're listening and want to date me the trick is uh be a little forceful yeah no i think that that is a hundred percent the way to date dylan not that i've ever tried <laughs> but <laughs> if you're looking for his co-host's opinion great you gotta be uh you gotta be direct <laughs> dylan's a straight shooter uh, it is it is a relationship that like does feel very um it feels like somewhat jason and tasha as well yes where yes. I'm like, not that like the particulars have that much mm-hmm. in common, but just like the yeah, just the, the the good chemistry and the kind of the way that this relationship is written does harken back to to that one. And I I think I don't know. I think it's interesting to like they do a good job with Jack because he is such a passive person. Mm. Um, where I'm like, I do like that they still like that. Joanne's thing is not that she bulldozes him. Mm-hmm. Like he still is the one who asks, like, "Do you have dinner plans?" And then she yeah. like very firmly responds, like, "Yeah, we're doing this." Yeah, like you're not like, yes, you're mm-hmm. gonna pick me up at seven. Yeah, um, which is great, but like it's not. It's like, not there's... betraying either of their characters. Correct, correct, and it's not like, yeah, she is. There's a way, there's a, Jack is so passive that it would be easy to write a woman who just kind of runs him over and he mm-hmm. doesn't know what to do in a way that we might see in a later episode in this arc um, <laughs> with a different character. Yeah. But like, yeah. Or even like we saw with a uh, freaking, is it Ethel? Is that the one in Novacom that has like a thing for wit? Oh, or yeah. Or post Novacom yeah, against yeah, yeah. Connie and Mitch era. Yeah. But like, there's. The, yeah, that old, that old, the old lady who, who like aggressively is, hits on correct. Wit. Yes, and I like, I like that this is sweet. Yeah, yeah. Um, while still being like somewhat forceful, but mm-hmm. not like aggressive. No, no, yeah, it's is direct. I, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, direct. It's direct not, is a way, great way to put it. They're not, you know, like Jack is initially timid, but he's still shooting his shot in in the love at first sight of it all. Like he's he's still going for it. Yeah. And Joanne is, you know, is playful and excited, but she's also tender and caring in, in these. And so, yeah, no, yeah. I just think their chemistry works so well. And the fact that they've acted together before this makes this scene makes so much more sense. In, yeah. Like how these actors can have such good chemistry, you know, having not 
ever been on the show together before. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, we, uh, we cut back to Wit and Jason, and they're kind of talking about the changes Jason made to the Imagination Station, and Wit's very impressed. And Jason's kind of prodding and like, do you mind all the changes mm-hmm. I've made here? And Wit's like, no, like, I think you've done a great job. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah, he doesn't seem to have have any issue with it and yeah it is like they yeah their their father-son dynamic is weird it doesn't totally make sense but they still have like a they still have very nice exchanges yeah it's not like i would say that it doesn't feel like a mentor to him in any way oh wait to jason yeah i mean shouldn't feel like his father right (laughs) yeah but like i feel like i feel like that's like yeah one of the roles yeah yeah and and i think that my opinion on the matter was that you know the 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 differences between hal smith and paul herlinger are like the most highlighted in in their interactions but they never interacted townsend coleman Coleman and and hal smith never never interacted interacted. that's right because he didn't come on to mortal coil there is a different person playing jason for like half an episode yeah but and isn't it just like the voice clips or no 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 i mean there's someone in the in the like jason's in those episodes but yeah. like barely um yeah it's just it, it's an interesting thing where it's like oh you have this fully fledged independent character who has like like he and jack almost have like a more father son relationship during blackard stuff no 100 percent. like what we're getting with wit and jason here and i understand that it's early goings they're both trying to find their footing and whatever yeah and it's a writing issue more than it's a performance issue mm-hmm. but like it is just kind of funny um but but yeah then uh you would think that they would have better chemistry than the love at first sight people <laughs> yeah yeah but that is not the case and that, that you know yep. that's okay it's worth noting though Yep. And then we have, right, we have uh, Connie burst in and be like, hey, can you tell a Bible story at my Bible study this week or whatever? And. No, isn't this when she's like, talk to my friend about. No, that one's later. That's later. Okay. First is the Bible study because it's. Jonah. Yeah, correct. And he's like, well, have you asked Bernard? Like, he's Mm -hmm. the one who (laughs) asks, who everyone asks for these stories these days. Love a little inside baseball there. Yep. And then, like, references that Connie, Jason references yeah. that Connie did a really good one, which is, like, earlier on this album. Oh, the Ruth um, one is on yeah. this album? Okay. Yep. The Three Weddings and a Funeral. Um, and then, yeah, and then we also have, um, yeah, it's just, like, so we've talked throughout this thing about them trying to figure out how and if they were going to keep Wit back in the show. Mm-hmm. What's well, and like. Yeah, and there's there's this idea that, like, they, yeah, just weren't quite sure what the chemistry was going to be. They, it was, they were setting up a way for them to put him back into missions at the end of this. Mm-hmm. And, like, that this might be a way for them to, you know, prop up the the value of missionaries and whatever if they send their main character to do this and um and they just yeah kind of had that thing that they could ride for a little bit of like okay um yeah how how are we gonna do this and then they eventually at the end of this episode like decide that it's gonna stay um, in large part because of the chemistry Herlinger had with the cast and just the excitement that the writing team had over bringing Wit back. But so much of this episode, in the run-up to that, feels like them airing aloud mm-hmm. the conversations they're having in the room, which is like, we have already been functioning without Wit for all this time. Yeah. What does he bring that others don't? We mm-hmm. have given Bernard this role as bible teller we have let connie do that Mm -hmm. jason's here to like is handling the invention side Mm -hmm. we've established now that jack is staying in town yeah Um, when jack is the 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 sage presence yeah yeah and it's just like it's really like setting up like okay is there a like what are all the reasons that they're arguing about internally as to why or why not to keep wit let's have the characters voice those it's like um 
you see Moneyball, right? Yeah. Like the whole thing where they get rid of their one star player and they have to make up all the runs and, and on base stuff just with everybody else, basically. Sure. And they scrape the bottom of the barrel to do that. Yeah. I feel like this episode is very much them, yeah, the writers reckoning with the fact that they have this incredible ensemble that they created to support their missing main. And now that the main is returned, we don't know what to do with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And. Yeah, and this is something that they will later go on, like, that they will later struggle with with Eugene, mm. um, uh, which we've talked about in, like, Eugene Returns stuff. But we didn't go much past that. Mm. But, like, that's a big thing when, like, Will Ryan comes back after all the years of his absence. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, what do we do with this guy now that he's, like, no longer a grad student at the college, mm -hmm. and he's married, and he's now just, like, a town character? Meanwhile, we've introduced, like, Wooten as mm -hmm. the new foil to Bernard, and we've, yeah. like, done all of this other stuff to make, like, to fill the gap while Will Ryan's been gone, and, and now, now he's back. What's his place? And it feels like, right, they're going through the same thing here, where it's like where do we slot wit into the town is he actually needed did they release the episodes writing off will ryan yet i don't know yeah that's i mean i i don't care about new odyssey at all but i do actually really want to hear those episodes <laughs> and it sucks because i i'm probably gonna have to pay the money to get them you can do the thing where they like i mean they put like the last 30 days of episodes on like just to listen to on f for free online Oh, that's right. And so right. when yeah, they actually air right. on the yeah. radio, assuming that hasn't happened yet, you yeah. can you can do that. Oh man, that's so scary. I mean, I love the show uh, to a certain extent, uh, but I I do not trust what they're going to do with Will Ryan's character. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, fear of death aside, I know, I know. What are they going to do about Harlow Doyle? Like, it's such a bummer. Yeah, like. What are we supposed to do without him? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is core to the culture of Austin. He is. I mean, he goes all the way back. <laughs> oh, man. There's a bumbling... Yeah, there's going to be a void in the private detective marketplace and the... Yeah, there's yep. just big problems. Wooten's going to have to get a, get a magnifying glass. I, I love to see that, though. I mean, you know, that that is kind of uh, Captain Absolutely or something like that. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Just Wooten becomes a superhero to protect mm -hmm. Odyssey. There we go. What a great, what a great show we've created here. Um, so yeah, uh, we yeah we just we, Connie and the writers and everyone is kind of grappling with the idea that like Wit is less essential mm -hmm. to Odyssey or to the show mm -hmm. as he once was. Like yeah, yeah, both both the town and the show. Like, he's not what he used to be, and how do we come to terms with that? Um, we also establish here that uh, Jason um, was the no vote, mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason for that is that he, like, misses being a spy. Yeah, he himself wants to go out and experience the new things and have yep. the challenges of being in the field. Yes, and he's afraid that, like, he's going to be trapped at wit's end if wit leaves, so, yeah. like, maybe he should just do the missions thing here. Uh, Connie interrupts again to pitch a season one episode of Odyssey, essentially, <laughs> where she's just like, there's this girl down there, and she wants to go to a rock concert. Yeah, without her parents Without her knowing. parents' permission. Can you come and talk to her? And Wit's like, I don't even know who that is. Yeah, like, what are you saying? Stop. <laughs> you go talk to her. Yeah. You know her. Which is good. I like it. No, no, it is good. And that is the, you know, the correct response mm -hmm. in that situation, um, given the circumstances. But yeah, no, it is it is frustrating. Uh, you know, maybe this is a terrible fanfic idea, but what if when Jack and Wit met and made up, they fell in love. Have we have we ever entertained a a a a, 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 a whack? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no? Not one that really works. There's so much good Jack and Joanne chemistry. Why would you want to, like, get in the way of that? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get in the way of that. But I think it would be a really fun fanfic to write Wit as gay with Jack. <laughs> all right. Well, you can do that, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. I'll add it to my, my notes of all yeah. the wonderful AIO fanfic premises I'll never write. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um... Eugene then comes up and explains that he also wants to take over the missions trip, um, yeah. that he's been too self-absorbed. Jack runs in and he's like, I think which should go because I don't want to lose Joanne. Yeah. And everyone in the room is just like yelling and it is a blast. Mm -hmm. and, and then Paul Herlinger yells. <laughs> yep. And he's like, what is this? A Marx Brothers routine, which is a good callback. Uh, Blackard, I think, in oh, Way Late in the Windy yes, City. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first to, um, I think, Wit and Richard, yeah. like, tormenting him as a Marx Brothers routine. Lovely. <laughs> I, I, another a wonderful example of the show only referencing stuff from, like, 1938. <laughs> yes, correct, correct. There are no modern references. Wit is eternal. Yeah. Um, and so he... Yeah, he he sends everyone downstairs. They start to talk. He's like, no, no, no. Don't talk. Just go downstairs and wait. And wait. I'm going to come down with my decision. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And he walks down and he's like, look, I do not want everyone here to need me mm -hmm. or to need wit's end. Like, that's not the point. Yeah. That being said, like, I'm not going. And before you can speak, no one else in this room is going. Mm -hmm. and Joanne's like but what about the people in South America and Wit has just uh, he says it very well where he's just like all of you are just like coming up with reasons. logical reasons to go and not actually listening for God's calling mm -hmm. well and that's the thing we, we glossed over at the beginning was that Wit when when confronted with what was going to happen, it was very clearly like, yeah, no, I mean, this is, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but clearly I'm going to pray and wait on the Lord. Yep. And like, that's, that is where, you know, Wit has established that as his perspective. And so all of this has happened. And now Wit, you know, gets everybody to shut up and he's able to be like, no, you, you've missed the point entirely. There's no, like, you need yeah. to be called for this to work. Yep. And right. And he... Yeah, he just sets it up so well where he's like, I was a hundred, like, I felt the calling so strong yeah. the last time, and I haven't felt it this time, and that's what's been part of what's been hard. And all of you guys have reasons to go, but none of you are actually listening. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, that was just, I mean, that was convicting. Yeah. In, yeah. like, a surprising way that i don't expect from this show and especially not from a phil lawler episode certainly but just like uh yep i being someone who is very like logistics oriented mm -hmm. reasonable like whatever have a i definitely have a tendency to just plow ahead and mm -hmm. be like all right i'm gonna like do the things to make this happen because the and sometimes I do think, like, there being a clear and easy path laid ahead is God's calling. Yeah. Oh, no, 100%. But I think that that's not necessarily always the case, and the only way to differentiate that is listening. Yep. You know, and yep. that's, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is hard to not just act out of, like, right, your internal reasons for doing something into actually like or even your internal moral compass yeah where it's like this is something you know i'm a christian this is what i believe i'm trying to you know have my heart molded by jesus and my heart is telling me that this is something that i should do yep and i think that's a good default way to operate mm -hmm. but i think yeah you also have to take into consideration okay what is god's actual will in this mm -hmm. and yeah, what what measures can I take to discern that? And I think a lot of times that is having conversations with other people. Yeah. And having them look and go like, yeah, that makes logical sense, but how do you actually feel in your heart? Because that's not mm -hmm. something I can usually get to on my own. 
See, I would say that I'm kind of the opposite, where it's like I can get to the spot in my heart, and then I'm like, okay, how do I logically make this happen? Or like, what? Are, hmm. how do I logistically enact this idea? Hmm. Um, but, you know, maybe we should have a podcast together or something. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that is, is really good, though, as far as the decision-making process. And, yeah, like you said, it's, it is really convicting for me because oftentimes – yeah, the the idea that I feel like there is a god honoring opportunity that has come my way that I want to take advantage of or something that I think could be really good um, might not be the right thing for me at the time, even though it's hypothetically something that God would appreciate or that might bring me closer to him, Yeah, you know, in, in the sense that, like, I, at least for me and my recovery and all of that, like the the whole turning it over to your higher power is is less of like it's less of like how do you make the the decisions that you need to to survive and a lot more of can we actually relinquish control of our actions to something else and be like something uh, like a a frame of mind or a comprehension that is beyond us. Um, and I think that that's, yeah, like you said, that that's where the problem in lies, where you, you know, you are a human dwelling on the heart of God, trying your best to interpret and to do the things that you can. But at the end of the day, you're still a human trying to determine the will of God. Sure. <laughs> so you better freaking listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, then what goes on to explain that there was an idea that like no one even realized yeah. um there, there's a solution here um because joanne's like but we gotta send someone he's like there's someone who's like already doing work in that area who both like eugene and i know um which is dan isidro of the cross of cortez, cortez fame <laughs> um, lovely not problematic at all <laughs> but he's that he's currently not working with universal press but like they're, they're gonna set up a call yeah and that like He's already on the ground, knows the culture, like yeah, he's like that is qualified. the exact person who you want in that situation, and he's excited about this. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like well done. Um, that is super cool. I appreciate that being the decision that they went with, as opposed to shipping off an Odyssey character. They, yeah. they they're like, oh no, no, let's you know have somebody that's actually culturally competent and like called to the area yep. be the one doing the serving yeah and so yeah uh jason they yeah kind of wits kind of like so i'll be here and jason you're free to leave and whatever and um jason's like uh yeah he thinks he's gonna be sticking around real a little longer um and then we get a little bit of uh jack and joanne kind of excited about the fact that they have additional time here um and yeah, they they leave together and they're a, a yeah, just their relationship is moving quickly because they are older and can afford to do that. Yeah. Um, what else they got going on? Right. Uh Wit does refer to Jack as a real smoothie. Yeah, that is um <laughs> that's not a real word there, my guy. <laughs> yeah, watch out. This guy can be a real mm, strawberry banana smoothie. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, I think overall, this is an episode that really does a good job in justifying what is Wit's place in Odyssey. Yeah. Well, and I think it. I, I the thing that I appreciate the most is showing how much these characters have grown in the time since Wit has been gone. And, and, you know, in a show that is, like we said earlier, so keen to allow popping around and everything. And you have so many static characters that aren't necessarily yeah. growing in front of you. This is a really good benchmark episode to be like, actually, no, Connie has changed dramatically, and Eugene has changed dramatically, and even Jason has changed a lot. Yeah, and it does a good job of, I think it's an impressive thing to bring Wit back into the fold without immediately shipping someone else out. Yeah. Because you have the Welcome Home episode where Wit, like, where Jack literally leaves at the end of the episode yeah, and yeah. then gets roped back. And in this episode, we set up, like, Jason's like, oh, I am now free to leave, but mm -hmm. doesn't. And so, like, we have at least a period of time, and it won't exist forever, but, like, where all of these characters are there and are able to be part of the main cast without needing to do this, like, 
we got to trade one for the other. Yeah. And, like, it establishes how, like, I think even with the Bernard and Connie, like, doing better with, you know, being the Bible story people and whatnot, like, establishes how this show is going to move forward without wit as the absolute center. Mm. That's like it is a point. show that is it is a show that started out as the wit show and yeah. became about the town of Odyssey. Yeah. And I love that we're able to fold wit back in without losing that. Yeah. Well, and it's because yeah. it's what makes like it's the part of Odyssey that I love the most. Exactly. All stem from wit not being the main character. Yeah. Because he's, yeah, he functions the best as an ancillary role that comes in and provides context or perspective. And yeah, no, I I definitely agree. And I never, you know, obviously as a child and up until this point, never appreciated the fact that Paul Herlinger, because he wasn't, you know, a famous voice actor in the same way that Hal Smith was, kind of, you know, influenced their decision to, to make the show more about the cast and less about the star. Um, but I think that that's exactly what it needed to. And I think that a lot of the people that don't like newer Odyssey as much would appreciate it more if they reverted to a style more akin to this, where it's more about the ensemble cast. And I think that they do, you know, try and strike a balance with some of the new stuff. Um, like the green ring conspiracy, I think is a, is a fine example of a, of of a an arc that doesn't really closely revolve around wit but wit's still very much involved yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah i think i think i think wit being here is good yeah oh, certainly. i just think that there it's cool that he's not that he doesn't need to be in every episode. he doesn't feel like the main character yep they, which is good <laughs> yes yeah yeah it's it is a really cool thing and we get to yeah, we get to kind of have one final note on the Wit's End or the Return of Wit saga in in, in next week. We'll get to kind of close this thing out, and then we still have more to cover in in the Odyssey Mega arc after that. Um, but um, yeah, uh, Andrew, anything you uh, you want to plug this week? The the new season of RuPaul Drag Race is almost over, and it's been great. The uh, Drag Race All Stars. I've been watching that. That has been good. Would uh, would highly recommend if you are into that show. Um, watching this season. There you go. What about you, Dylan? Anything? Um, did man. we plug Asteroid City last time? Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, two two weeks ago. But yeah. Um. Uh. What do I? What do I have to plug? If I Sour watch. cream donuts. <laughs> that, that 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 feels like an Andrew plug. Yeah, that's more fair. than a me plug, but. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Sour cream donut holes. Uh, it's the best donut that... It's better than any cake donut, is 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 its slogan. I prefer them chilled. Mmm. That's a good take. I like the blueberry kind. Mmm. No. Just a sour cream donut hole. Incredible. So good. Does not taste like sour cream, despite the no, name. No. No. I, I assume if you're a lactose person, you probably should avoid it. But, you know... You should also avoid this podcast. Oh. No. no <laughs> Just kidding. Mommy, I know you can't have dairy. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, uh, with all that being said, we are done. Uh, we will be back next week with episode 369. It's a wrap. Bye, guys. Bye.